Here we are again, this time with the actual review of this unit. This is what I'm about to be using. It was simply listed as 6 heat pipe CPU cooler on eBay. I've already done a little unboxing video on that. Go ahead and check that out if you want the details and what it came with. But it is going to be replacing this, which was a $5, 6 eBay cooler where the, um, <clears throat> it came with two fans, but they broke very shortly after I got it. So I put this high airflow fan on the top, and this dinky little thing has been cooling my i7-3820, uh, I believe that is. And it's been working, but oh boy is it loud. Keeps it under 70 degrees, but just barely. And like I said, very, very loud. So let's go ahead and get this swapped out. Now, I've got this in my sleeper case, which unfortunately is very skinny. So I was initially concerned about the height difference of the, the two coolers here. But I've double checked the measurements and this one should fit just fine, I hope. Now there's only one way to find out. Now before we begin, I want to specify that the, uh, the direct contact heat pipes, you do need a tiny little bit extra on your uh, thermal compound for these types of coolers just to fill in the minuscule gaps between the heat pipes. You don't need too much extra, just a little bit more than usual. And of course, this is a Socket 2011 CPU, a giant mother effer, so we will be using even more. But you know, the more the better. So, let's get this mounted. As far as mounting, it's really pretty standard. You uh, stick the cooler in the slot, hook that one in, and then on the other side, it's typical AMD mounting. I bunged it up there. You just kind of push this one down until it latches. So, since I can't do that with one hand in the case, I'm going to do that off camera. She is installed, and one thing to be very noteful of is that uh, little arrow there showing you the airflow direction, and I did compare the fan orientation with that arrow to confirm it is pointing in the right direction. That has plenty of clearance there. I know it's kind of hard to see. I don't have the greatest lighting set up. But we should be good to go. So let's go ahead on to my benchmarks, see how it performs. I have excellent news. CPU-Z sucks. The stress bench in CPU-Z, even though it says it's at 100%, the cores never reach 60 degrees. However, go ahead and close this. We'll run a quick. I'm not going to do the entire Cinebench run. I just want to have it run long enough to make a point. There's my uh, score, by the way. And uh, it is not at 3.6 gigahertz. It is at 4 gigahertz. The i7-3820 is not a terribly good overclocker. It's not a truly unlocked CPU. Let's go ahead and give it a second here, and I will show exactly what I mean. Hopefully it will have the same behavior as earlier. Where it should reach a few degrees hotter across all cores, tickling the lower end of the 60s. It's already hotter than the uh, CPU-Z got at least on one core. There's two cores. The point of this video is not to judge CPU-Z. The point of this video is to show that that 6-pipe CPU cooler is actually pretty damn good. Far better than I ever expected it to be, at least. Anyway, um, I benched this all last night, and I never saw temperatures above 63 degrees. I saw no thermal throttling, even at 4 gigahertz. Not that this is a very good overclock, mind you. It's Again, it's an i7-3820, it's not a true overclocking chip. But I have got to say that I can put my official seal of approval on this little cooler. I think this is the, uh, probably one of the better CPU coolers I've ever tested, and it's only 20 bucks. This has been Low Spec Action Squad, hopefully this video has helped you make a cooler choice. And, uh, yeah. Wait, you're expecting me to say more? Now this video's over.